these are the best protein pancakes I've invented with a seriously impressive macronutrient split. This is an original Sarah is Strong recipe that I Frankenstein together from my old favorites. For these pancakes, we are going to use Greek yogurt, and I use the Chobani Zero Sugar Vanilla. It's important to note that this yogurt is sweetened with stevia, which does impact the pancake's overall sweetness and flavor. If you only have unsweetened Greek yogurt, then try doubling the monk fruit or other sweetener, which we'll get to later. We'll also need one egg, oats, vanilla, almond flour, coconut flour, baking powder, cinnamon, egg whites, monk fruit sweetener, and cottage cheese. I'm beginning with 100 grams of liquid egg whites. Next, I add my one whole egg, then 80 grams of artificially sweetened vanilla Greek yogurt. Here is the cottage cheese that I forgot to put out for the first shot. We're using 80 grams of this as well. Oats are next at 20 grams, then 15 grams each of almond flour and coconut flour. Monk fruit sweetener is at one tablespoon. I will link a conversion chart in my description to help out anyone using a different artificial sweetener. For reference, the conversion for granulated monk fruit to white sugar is a one-to-one -one ratio. And remember, if you did not use sweetened Greek yogurt, double the amount of sugar replacement now. I used a half teaspoon of baking powder, a splash of vanilla, and a light sprinkle of cinnamon. I'm using my Ninja Nutribullet to blend the ingredients. After drizzling avocado oil onto the pan on low-medium heat, I'm adding my first batch of pancakes. It's been approximately five minutes by the time I start to flip, but this time will change based on many variables, so flip once you can easily slide the spatula underneath without dragging and tearing the pancakes. It's better to flip them back over later to cook longer, if needed, than to risk burning them. And please pardon the lopsided burner. It used to fit fine when we moved in, but after the first time I cleaned the burner bowls, I could never get it to align properly again. It helps with the camera angle, but hurts my cooking. After I put the second batch of batter onto the skillet, I checked in with Bunny. If I don't keep her content, she jumps on the counter to get my attention. This second batch is looking absolutely gorgeous. Then straight back to my squiggly bunny. I saw a funny post once about homemade or made with love, meaning I licked the spoon but kept using it. And I think that should be applicable to air contaminated with floating cat hairs in my kitchen. The final batch was a little shy of two full pancakes, plus a little Barbie doll sized pancake. As Bob Ross says, we don't make mistakes. We have happy accidents. After a downpour of sugar-free syrup, these bad boys are ready to eat. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. I'm nervous. I've never made my own recipe like this before. Well, I did once and it came out super thick. So this is technically attempt number two, but I mean, we'll see. It's good, it passes. It definitely passes. My first attempt definitely turned out way too thick because while I was blending the batter, I kept having to add more and more almond milk to dilute it because it was so thick. It was like sticking to the walls of the blender. This one turned out just a little bit thin, as you can tell, like, you see what I mean? It's just, it's just kind of, it's not as fluffy. It's not as voluminous as I would like. So we will be going back to the drawing board, but I will say that this one definitely passes. It's good. Now that we're enjoying this dish, let's take a look at the macronutrient split. I did not include the oil in my pan or the syrup since someone might prefer butter or different toppings. Furthermore, different brands or fat percentages in the dairy ingredients could result in a slightly different macronutrient split. This is especially true if you use vegan replacements. So the pancakes alone, exactly as I made them today, are impressively balanced. Total calories for this entire stack is 447. 18 grams of fat constitutes 36% of these calories. 30.8 grams of carbs make up another 28%, and a whopping 40.9 grams of protein completes this dish with the final 36%. What an incredible bang for your nutrition buck. Anything not keto with 40 grams of protein but still less than 500 calories deserves a spot in your weight loss recipe repertoire. If you end up trying this recipe, please let me know how it goes. And I will mention, I'm not the best resource for cooking questions or how to substitute ingredients, so you may have to rely on old trusted google.com for those answers. And if somehow you haven't already, please consider leaving a like on this video and clicking that tempting subscribe button. Thanks for watching.